Okay, guys, today we've got a very special guest, a good friend of mine, all the way from the Netherlands. It's uh, Greg Van Den Bold, and he is a health optimization guru, and he is really, really excited to share some of his health optimization uh, tips and tactics that he's learned through the years. He's a personal trainer. He has got uh, the Health Optimization podcast, which you should definitely check out. And we're going to just dive straight in now and say hello to Greg. So Greg, would you like to uh, say hello to the, to the guests and maybe just give us a little bit of a, an introduction as to how you got into this mad world of biohacking and health optimization? Man, Chris, oh, what an introduction, man. It's a, it's a joy to be here and to talk with you again because uh, we, had a, we had a conversation on my podcast and I enjoyed it a lot, man. Uh, I appreciate those words and uh, I really look forward to have uh, one of those valuable conversations again. So to answer uh, to your question, how I got into this crazy world of health optimization and biohacking, um, it's a good question, man. It makes me think as well. Um, where to start? Where to start? I think I was 19 when I started to be more conscious about my, my own health. I, I started to go to the gym. First, it was really um, make sure that my fitness was uh, uh, in check. I wanted to gain some muscle. You know, as a 19-year-old guy, you're, you're into that. You want to gain some uh, uh, some muscle. But then I was like, all right, so outer physique i'm only focusing on the outer physique there must be more and i was more and more i was start i've started to read books about my inner inner well-being as well so and sort of a sort of a shift occurred actually instead of thinking like i want to go to the gym and and gaining muscle i want to wake up as energized as possible so it was more about like f fitness in terms of energy than fitness in terms of outer physique. And that's really when I um, got interested in the topics of sleep, of nutrition, of getting proper hydration, like going into nature, um, overall well-being, staying close to your human nature as, as much as possible. And... Uh, that's a bit how it started. And at the moment, uh, more and more, I'm starting to uh, get interested in like tools and gadgets to improve my health as well. Um, rings that track, that track my sleep, you know, uh, glasses that uh, block blue light before I go to bed, um, bioresonance with uh, little machines called Healy or EMS trading, electrical muscle stimulation. Like all these almost futuristic tools that uh, that I use to optimize my health, man. Yeah, man. There's a lot, of, a lot of little tools you can use there, and um, we'll get into some of those in a bit more, bit more detail for the listeners, and uh, how they can be start to use some of these practices in their own life. I really, I really liked what you said there about um, how you started to go to the gym for the whole physique aspect, and like, and all of a sudden it's like you get drawn to it for that reason but then you start to feel really healthy you know you start feeling better it's like well, where's this coming from and then the more and more you start to optimize those little things you you realize you can actually feel better and better and better and then do you ever sometimes think like sometimes we all do it don't we we're human we take a step back a little bit and you're like oh man look you know it's do you ever feel like that sometimes you don't feel as good and then you're like you probably still feel a hundred times better than most people out there that aren't mm -hmm, doing any of this stuff. But then you realize how good you can feel your potential, your human potential is so, is so far ahead, you know? Yeah, ab absolutely. And that's because you become so conscious about what's going on in your body. Mm -hmm. Like be because you're focusing on, uh, on all these different things, you, you, you really connect with your own body. And I think that's beautiful. Like when I, um, when I feel tired, I, I, I know what to do to make sure that the next day I feel energized again. But then exactly what you're saying, I feel tired because I know how it feels to be like super energetic. Mm -hmm. 
but maybe my tiredness so to say is high energy for someone else who's like energy yeah, who's exhausted all the time exactly and uh, that's definitely uh, interesting so what do you so what do you do then if you feel tired let's let's give people some practical advice to start this off what, what would you do if you felt a bit fatigued yeah well good question man i uh like listening to your body is definitely um a uh a challenge sometimes because for me personally also when i feel tired i still want to go uh, outside and run you know because i just love to run i love to be outside but when you feel tired like let's say i wake up and uh, i i haven't slept like how i want to and i wake up a bit tired i i have the 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 choice to do strength training or not i know that instead of strength training it's maybe better to do some yoga. So I'll do some yoga. And besides that, so taking it slow, listening to your body, it's important to give your um, body the right nutrients to recover. So nutrition is a big part of it as well. Mm -hmm. And then there are certain tools, as you know, like if it comes to recovery, taking ice baths and that sort of stuff, it's not fun in the beginning, it's stress for your body, but then it really helps with recovery as well mm -hmm. so i drink uh tons of tea besides that i drink tons of tea and just take it slow make sure that the next day when i go to bed i have like a very i have a routine before i go to bed to slow down don't watch my don't look at my phone before i go to bed so the next day mm -hmm. i have uh i i'm fit again Nice that's bath. basically those are some some, yeah. some some things that you can do yeah like you said the, the ice baths are are powerful man i i didn't have an ice bath today i had a i had a cold shower this morning and mm. this is actually this is the first time i've done this in a long time i was a bit tired this morning and um i i had a nice i was an ice shower so i got in the shower cold straight into it and i don't do that very often man you know but it's it's powerful it woke me up and i was like pff, ready to energized go. Yeah, it does energize you, man. It does. And the ice bath, even more so. But like you say, you've, you've got to be cautious with these tools. But um, have you got any, any tips for somebody who was going to, somebody's going to get into an ice bath? Just a couple of, maybe a couple of practical tips you could, you could use to start off? Or Yeah, definitely, man. Uh, first of all, I want to say that I, I absolutely love the feeling after I uh, expose my body to, to, to the cold. Like whether it's diving into a cold lake, or doing an ice bath, cold shower. It's never fun mm -hmm. in the beginning. Although I have to say like, if you do it with some people, like you really energize each other as well. Mm -hmm. So uh, then it's definitely a lot of fun. But if someone wants to start with doing an ice bath, let's say, first of all, I would say that dive into the, into the theory a bit, you know? Like we know that there's different breathing patterns that definitely help change uh, your uh, oxygen and the carbon dioxide uh, ratio in your blood, et cetera, which helps uh, your body to respond to the, to the, to the stress response from, from the cold. So definitely dive into the theory, man. Get, uh, uh, get acquainted with why ice baths are beneficial because once you know why you do them, it's because it becomes more easy to also um, make the switch and just step under that cold shower. Mm -hmm. And so that's definitely something that I would recommend. Just make sure you, you get acquainted with the, the theories behind it. And another tip maybe is like, just don't think, just do it because afterwards you feel very energized. Yeah, man. It's, it's like, again, it's like not something uh, it's it's not something very very, uh, very very funny to do so to say it's 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 very uncomfortable but the way you feel afterwards is incredible yeah just do it man just do it that's the that is the number one thing you just said there i think because it's, it's it's there's a resistance to it isn't there these things make you uncomfortable so you don't te tend to want to do it but you just go and do it and then it's afterwards you're like oh i'm so glad i've done it man, man. Oh. The, the feeling afterwards is indescribable. Yeah, awesome, man. You mentioned um, routines as well. I know you're a big fan of, of morning routines, evening routines. So why don't you um, 
let's let's go into that then let's go into to your morning routine what's your morning routine looking like like these days i know you've been tweaking it for a while so what have you come down to for now then yeah it's uh, definitely an interesting question because before i always had like yeah pretty standard morning routine but more and more i start to uh change my patterns based on 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 the seasons as well like it's march at the moment uh, um spring is coming so my routine is definitely changing at the moment like the sun is rising earlier so i go outside earlier as well at the moment i wake up at 5 30 and uh, um last summer i woke up at 5 a.m and this winter was 6 a.m so it's, it's based on the season this changes but for me like my morning routine at the moment 5 5 30 i wake up um, from fr from 5:30 to 5:45, I switch up my um, uh, my Himalayan salt lamp, and I write and I write down my my dreams. It's pretty. Uh, it's it, it's it's something new that I incorporated in my morning routine, but I write down my dreams because I want to work on my dream recall. Um, we can talk about it's it's a whole other it's a whole different topic, but it's super interesting, man. It has to do with. Uh, um, yeah, lucid dreaming and that sort of stuff. From 5.45 till 6.15, I make sure to do some yoga and maybe meditate. And lately I've been listening to motivational videos on YouTube while doing that. Mm -hmm. I used to meditate like 20 minutes, sit down, um, just focus on my breathing and do proper meditation. But lately I've, I have the feeling that I, uh, I, I want to listen to these motivational speeches and it really makes sure that I start the day off in a right way. So that's at the moment uh, my morning routine. And afterwards, I make sure to develop a skill. So from uh, afterwards, I normally it's like 30 minutes or 45 minutes um, that I read a book or work on a, on a skill. At the moment, I want, to, um, I want to learn how to write a blog. So that's what I'm doing. And then by the time I'm finished, like learning these things, I, uh, I more or less two, two hours, two hours in, and I've already done like a lot. And then the sun is up. It's great that, uh, the sun rises at like 7am at the moment. So I go outside and have a run and, uh, for 10 minutes, I, I, I'm fortunate to, to, to live in the woods at the moment. So I go for a run. This morning was fantastic. The sun was rising and Fresh oxygen in the morning is the best thing you can do. Like those rays of sunlight, you know, as as you know, they they trigger your circadian rhythm, and uh, you're 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 awake. And after the run today, I did some strength training. I did some push-ups, body uh, body weight movements, uh, and uh, and I was good to go, man. Shower and I'm good to go. That's that, that's my morning routine. That's an awesome little morning routine, man. That's uh, I've yeah. seen I've seen where you live in the woods there, and and I'm quite lucky where I live. But man, you've got it like, in the, yeah. is it man? This listeners, this guy lives in a, a cabin in the woods. It's like you've seen those those Instagram pages with cabins and stuff. It's like it's like some kind of some kind of mad um, mad dream world he lives in there. But uh, but that's awesome. But but going back, uh, there's a couple of really good things in there I want to talk about actually. Let's let's start with um, so there's a lot of things in your morning routine there. So if we were to break that down for some practical things for people, what would you say like are the let's just take three of the biggest things that you said like you said there. So um, so almost like a meditation jur journaling sort of thing. Would that be one? And then what else would you say? What there's a couple of, yeah. sort of standpoint things that I noticed. There, there's definitely a, a, a way to break it down. Like um, I implement uh, a certain routine as described is in, as in the 5 a.m. club from the book from Robin Sharma. Right. It's my, uh, I, it's, it's almost my religion. man. I, I read the book when I was in Nepal, like traveling like one and a half years ago. And uh, it changed my, my whole uh, morning routine and the way I start my day. And you can definitely break it up. So, in the book, I recommend everybody reading it. Robin Sharma, the author, talks about the four interior empires, which are your heart set, your soul set, your mindset, and your health set. Those are the four pillars 
which you ideally want to work on the first hour of your, of your day. So from, as he's described from 5 a.m. to 6 a.m. Like me, it's up to you how you change that, um, change that routine. If you want to do it like uh, from 5.30 to like till maybe 8 or 8.30 as I do, that's perfectly fine. Or maybe you, you don't have as much time, but he says at least one hour dedicate to your heart set, soul set, and mindset and health set. So what is, what is your heart set? Your heart set is affirmations or um, l l watching like listening to motivation, motivational speeches, like writing in a journal, all those stuff, all that sort of stuff. And then you, you have your soul set, which is obviously the meditation or the yoga. Um, then you have your health set, which he basically describes as making sure that you in the morning, first thing in the morning, you sweat and you uh, make sure that uh, cortisol is dropped and serotonin is increased and all that sort of stuff, like dopamine and uh, all, all, all the good brain brain derived nootropic factors in your brain. And uh, so heart set, soul set, and then you have your mindset. Mm -hmm. And uh, your, your mindset is like learning, as I mentioned before, like uh, reading or develop a specific skill. Um, those are like four pillars in which you can break down uh, an, an ideal morning routine. And then it's up to you how you feel, how you feel that in, like in the first hour of your day, so to say. Yeah, I love that, man. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to write that down in the 5 a.m. club. Is that what the book's called? Yeah, yeah, the 5 a.m. club, Robin gonna, Sharma. I've heard of it. I've not read it, but I'm going to read that. And I'm going to... I'll leave the I'll leave the link to it in the in the show notes for the listeners also, as well. The five a.m. Also, club. the book, the book is also it, it's it, it's written in such a um, is it's highly informative, but then it's also written in such a playful way. Mm -hmm. It's such a joy to read, man. And and Robin Sharma, he's also the author of the 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 monk who sold his Ferrari. He his books are very valuable and also help me a lot with uh, creating my morning routines. Yeah, I love it, man. I love it, man. So you can just, so like you say, you could ideally an hour or so would be good, wouldn't it? To, to get up and, and spend an hour doing that stuff or longer. But some people maybe only have half an hour, you know, they've got obligations, family, kids, work, whatever. So even just taking 10 minutes or something, 10, 15 minutes, or you could do, let's just say 20 minutes. Everybody's got 20 minutes, haven't they? 20 minutes, you could do five minutes of each, man. You could get up, you could meditate and breathe for five minutes. You could do some press-ups, jump in the cold shower. You could, exactly. you know, you, and then... Affirmations, reading. Do some affirmations, and then you could be making your coffee and listening to your... I love the motivational videos, man. I tell you what, I go through little phases myself where, I, where I, I don't know what you're listening to, but I listen to... Because I'm into my endurance sports, I listen to, like, David Goggins. I listen to... Yeah. Uh, usuals tony robbins you know yep. all these people and stuff and it's like it's so powerful and I, I do think i have this firm belief that that motivation is great but there's a certain point where we we go through phases of good motivation and, and it drops down again so we need to have discipline as well but i love that man i love i can picture you just like watching your motivational but it's something you can do in the background isn't it when you're when you're doing whatever else you can be getting ready brushing your teeth and yeah and it's like you're stacking stuff then we'll get into that when we're talking about like your sort of biohacks you're stacking different things and it's amazing what you can get done man yeah it's definitely it's it's so productive man and uh something else that i'm doing lately i, I bought these like um waterproof earplugs they're bluetooth so they don't have a wire and uh they're wired they're wireless and i I, I get it. I, I get into the shower while listening to these motivational speeches because yeah, like showering takes like 20 or 30 minutes of the day, like including like all these, uh, all, all the stuff that comes with it. Right. Mm -hmm. And uh, I've been doing it for like a couple months right now, like listening to podcasts under the, under the shower. Yep. And it's, it, it's such a, it's such a great way to, positively influence your mind man yeah man i've done the same thing with uh we've got a uh, one of them pill that was not a beach pill what's the other thing it's a bose a bose speaker we've got really loud mm. so i put it at the other edge of the bathroom and i stick that on and i put some motivational videos on youtube or whatever in the background and i'm there brushing my teeth whatever shaving getting a shower 
and it's like 30 minutes or whatever's gone by and you've got 30 minutes of and you're and it, even if you're not really listening to that it's, it's getting into your subconscious mind isn't it mm, absolutely absolutely and uh, bathroom so, university <laughs> that's it man that's it we should start a club yeah. <laughs> yeah. all right guys so i'm gonna put in the show notes the the first bathroom university is gonna start <laughs> up uh, later this year so we're gonna we're gonna take you to our bathrooms and show you what to do and then um, and just before we move on from the morning routines, man, I want you just to give us a little bit more about your dreams because we won't go too deep into it. But like, you have to tell me your dreams. But um, but I'll I'll, I'll actually start. I'll, I'll say I had a dream last night, which is unusual. I don't I don't recall my dreams very often unless I'm actively trying to do so. And I had a strange dream last night. I was in this dining hall somewhere. I don't know why, and I bumped into a person that I haven't seen in three four years. Um. And, and I was like, and t- talking to him, and I'm like, this is so bizarre. I haven't seen this person or heard from them in three or four years. And all of a sudden, there they are, vivid, clear as day in my dream. And I'm like, whoa. Mm. And I woke up and I'm like, that's weird. But, you know, but, but tell, me what you, tell me a little bit about dreams, man. Go on. T- let's tell everybody about dreams. Go. Well, uh, this is a pretty new topic to me as well, actually. I, uh, I, di- I, I don't know why I, I came across the topic of lucid dreaming, but um, maybe it has to do with the fact that I'm very interested in sleep. And also, obviously, dreaming is a huge part um, of sleep as well. And I came across a topic and the idea to be able to consciously take part of your dreams and even influence them. So meet certain people, um, have conversations with them. Sounded so uh, interestingly strange to me, but also very, uh, I, I, I don't know exactly how to explain it. But for instance, also I have to, while dreaming, a lot of your um, subconscious behavior is um shown in the dream so to say and i think you can also learn a lot while if you if you recognize the patterns in your dreams mm. you can maybe also in the waking world um work w- work on the things you need to work on as a person to develop yourself for instance yeah. so that's basically uh, one of the reasons why i what i why i got into this topic and uh, i'm still uh trying to 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 lucid dream though because it, it's it's basically a skill yeah. and right right now i'm 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 writing down my 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 dreams every morning and what when you do that your you dream your dream recall improves so your dreams become more clear as well and it's it's just a fascinating uh topic man it's so fascinating because i really i really do believe that something is happening there that we can that we don't have a, a, a good understanding of mm. yeah that's so, i think i think you've hit the nail on the head there there's a lot of like there's a lot of mixed opinions about dreaming whether it actually means something or it doesn't but like you say like surely if you're there's obviously something going on in your mind like for example my dream last night i saw that person so if you can contr- so what you're saying is if you can kind of control your dreams in a way you could potentially be spending eight or nine hours in your bed at night doing stuff that, that's improving your actual life, you know, rather than, also, just, rather than just dreaming about random dining halls. <laughs> and also neuroplasticity, man. Like, yeah. the, that also is a big topic of it. Mm. Like, you can, while dreaming, let's say you want to uh, improve... Um, Let's say you want to learn a specific sport. Let's say you want to learn how to tennis. But while dreaming, when you dream and you make the conscious decision to play tennis and in a dream, you can do whatever you want because it's a dream at the end of the day. So you decide to play tennis. You actually create new neural pathways in your brain because your brain do- do- doesn't, doesn't know the difference if you're dreaming or in the waking state. So once you're in the waking state and you created these new neural pathways, you'll be able to play tennis better than before. 
And that's something that I found super, super interesting. So what's happening within the brain while we dream? We dream during our REM sleep because that's, that's the state where our brain gets active. That's the, the REM sleep, rapid eye movement sleep mm -hmm. is basically, uh, so maybe we have to clarify here the different types of sleep as well. We have uh, the deep sleep, REM sleep, light sleep, and we have the waking state. Deep sleep is when your, when your um, brain patterns are in delta waves. This is where, as you know, and we're gonna talk about this as well, we're gonna talk about sleep, where your body gets the opportunity to recover, recover well. Then you have REM sleep. This is the part where your brain patterns go to theta and where your brain gets active, but your body is still paralyzed, we could say. Mm -hmm. Then we have light sleep, and this is the, this is the state where you're easily uh where you can easily wake up there's not a lot happening there REM sleep and deep sleep are the most interesting if you ask me mm -hmm. and then we have um, the cycle of the, the the waking cycle as i call it and this is basically the the bridge between all those different cycles because you go from waking to light to REM to deep from deep to REM to light to wake and then you have these five different cycles from 90 minutes more or less um, in your sleep. And uh, that's, that's basically what's happening. Yeah, so, so me and Greg here, we actually, um, we quite often share our scores, don't we? Our sleep scores. We've Absolutely. Both got, we've both got the, uh, the honor rings here. So, um, so we're constantly, I'm always constantly trying to improve my, my deep and REM sleep scores. Um, they're not bad, but man, you've got some, you've got some good scores, like on your deep sleep, you're always hitting, hitting three plus hours, pretty much. Um, unless you're only sharing the, the good ones with me and, and not telling me about the bad nights, you know, but, but let's, let's tell everybody a little bit about maybe um, how you can improve your, because obviously these, these REM and deep sleep cycles, as you say, are really important. So how can people improve these with a couple of practical tips they could use? Sure. Yeah, there's there, there def definitely uh, several things you can do. When it comes to, uh, to deep sleep, there are certain variables that ha have an influence on, your, on, your, uh, on the amount of deep sleep you have, like gender and age. Uh, but there's also things that you can do um, yourself to improve your deep sleep. So for the audience, it's important to know that your, your rhythm, your sleep rhythm is the most important thing when it comes to being able to wake up recovered and feeling fresh. Me, I wake up during the week and the weekend, my alarm goes off on the same, on the same time. This is like your, the rhythm of your body. Like it's very important that you have like a consistent rhythm, that you have a consistent routine. And, uh, this really helps because at some point your body recognizes when to go to sleep and automatically for me around like 10 i i i, I get a bit uh, how would i say I, I get tired and my body just knows that it has to go to sleep and then it can wake up at 5 30 feeling refreshed so this this routine that you create but also during the weekend is very important then what also is important that you make sure that your circadian rhythm is in check. What is your circadian rhythm? This is basically the, your biological clock, as you could say, which is based on the, the sun, on light exposure. So watching YouTube videos before you go to bed has a huge influence on your, on your sleep quality because your brain interprets that YouTube video as if the sun is shining. And if the sun is shining, your circadian rhythm is act activated, quote unquote, and your brain thinks it's, it's a day. So melatonin is not released. And you want, you want melatonin because that's the, that's the uh, neurotransmitter that says, well, hey, we have to go to bed. So watching, uh, wearing blue, uh, blue light blocking glasses is a huge part of my routine as well. Um, these are glasses that filter the blue light, so to say, 
and then my brain calms down and um, melatonin is released and I'm ready, I'm prepared to go to bed. Uh, I wear them like an hour, one and a half hour before I go to bed. And that's one of the main reasons that my uh, deep sleep is always like around two and a half hours, man, a night. So those two things, circadian rhythm and creating a routine are very important. And then a third, a third thing that I would mention is the time you eat. That's very important as well. Um, because as you can understand, like if you have a heavy meal before you go to bed, like 10 minutes before you go to bed, during the night, your body needs to di digest it all. And it takes a lot of energy. And you want your body to be arrested. Uh, you, want your, you want your body to, you, you want to give your body the opportunity to recover during the night. And it can do that if you have a lot of food in your system because that takes a lot of energy, obviously. So I think eating three or four hours before you go to bed is ideal. If you go to bed around 10 p.m., have your last meal at 6 p.m., and uh, uh, you, feel, you will feel a huge difference when waking up the day afterwards compared to the days that you eat late. Um, I think those three things are major when it mm -hmm. comes to uh, sleep quality, man. Yeah, some, some great tips there, man. And um, and you mentioned as well that earlier on, you were talking about your morning routine, you, how important it is to get outside and set that circadian rhythm in the morning. So that's something you do every day as well, is, is get out, get that daylight in. Um, and and again, you mentioned routines as well. So so have you got a, have you got a particular evening routine you're following just now that helps you wind down for the evening? Obviously, you're putting your blue blockers on. I've got a pair as well of the blue blocking glasses. Um, I do eat quite late sometimes, but um, you know, it's sometimes it's just it's just the way it has to be. But um, that that could be one of the we're always trying to we're analysing our data through our rings, aren't we, and looking and, and tweaking things here and there and seeing what works. But definitely the the light in the evening, I think, is 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 a major one that everybody can just all you got to do is put a pair of silly glasses on and stop caring what anybody thinks about man, you know. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. absolutely. So, so yeah, so evening routine. Have you got a bit of an evening routine just now, or what's um? Yeah, I have an evening routine. It's not as um strict as my morning routine. Mm -hmm. Uh, it's it's uh it's definitely uh, shorter. It's like thirty minutes. And what I do basically is first thing, let's say around eight uh, eight thirty p.m. I plan the next day. Mm -hmm. Um, because for me, this makes a huge difference the day afterwards. So I already know my, my day is set up to win. You know, I have an, I set an intention for the next day. So I know what to, what to expect. And obviously, uh, life is unpredictable. So you never know exactly how it goes, but for me, it really helps to have a plan, um, to make this plan the day before. So I know, um, what the targets are for the next day. So I plan my day. Afterwards, I, um, I, I write in a journal. I keep a journal and I really like to write down the, uh, the things that happen during your day. And I always find something that I'm grateful for as well. And um, at the end of my life, I really hope to have this tech of, of journals. And I, I, that's just something that I... Uh, it, it for me it, it's so valuable to write down my, my experiences right now when i when i read my experiences from like from when i studied in italy for instance it's it's a specific joy that that returns that comes back and being able to write down both challenges and beautiful moments of your life is uh is something that makes life for me more worthwhile and so I do that. And then afterwards, the last thing that I do, and I incorporated this uh, since uh, I think a couple weeks is I have, so I always have different type of journals, books where I write. And right now I have a different, I, I have a specific um, journal that's called uh, Brain Vomit. And this is a concept that I got from Tim Ferriss, who's like, 
also very into biohacking, health optimization. And what I basically do is I write down every single thought. Every, every single thought that I have, I just write down. So if I have a thought that's, for instance, um, that's basic, I, I don't know what to write, that can, that can be a thought, I write it down. Mm. And what happens is before you go to, it's also, it's very meditative. So at the end of, the, at the end of this routine, all my thoughts are written down. So my mind is calm. I've reflected on the day and I set an intention for the next day. So it's a really easy way to, um, to wind down for the night. And then what I also always do is I massage my own feet. And this, this might sound very, very strange to people, but I've been doing this for, for a couple months now. I, I got it from uh, Sruti Sundharesan, which is an Indian girl that I interviewed for my podcast. And she introduced me to this idea of like uh, giving yourself a massage. And I, th I thought it was so uh, thought provoking because when you massage your own feet, your, your, your feet are, are a point where uh, uh, with a lot of stress off you uh, most of the time if in, my, uh, in my place because um, Certain people also feel different, feel stress in different parts of the body. Some people have feel a lot of stress in their shoulders, legs, arms. For me, it's always my feet or my, or my legs. Uh, when I feel tired, my, my muscles are, yeah, a bit, how would I say, um, yeah, tired. And then I massage my own feet and there are, there's a lot of um, pressure points on your feet as well that are, um, related to certain organs and to your brain as well like it's connected to your whole body i really believe in this holistic view of of your body as well so when when i massage my own feet i really relax and um my I, physically i also wind down because the things that i do before are focused on the mind how to empty my, my, my mind, so to say. Mm -hmm. So after massaging my feet, my mind is empty. Physically, I'm super calm. And I think that's the recipe for a great night of sleep, man. Mm -hmm. Love that, man. So, so physical and mental kind of release, yeah. isn't it? It's like just, uh, and, and the massaging the feet, man, I tell you what, I've, I've been doing it as well, you know, I've been, uh, I've been, now and again, I've been trying it, but do you use any, do you ever, do you always just do it with your hands or do you ever use like uh, massage balls or anything like that when you're on your feet? I, I, massage oil, man, lavender scents. Massage oil, yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 What about like, oh, do, you do, do you do a lot of the, a lot of the foam rolling stuff or any of the like the lacrosse balls on your feet? You ever do that? No, or is it just? I, I, I don't do it on like a regular base. Uh, this is, this is in bed. This is in bed that you're massaging your feet, isn't it? So you're in bed. You've done your. Yeah, your, yeah, yeah. I'm I'm sitting on the side of my bed, and I just like, mm. yeah, basically yes, yes. Yeah, it's good, man. I, I like to do stretching in the evenings. Um, sometimes get the foam roller out, do a bit of massage on the, the calves and, and whatever in the quads. That's where I tend to get a lot of from from the running. But um, I've been doing your massaging the feet technique, and it sounds a bit bizarre, but it's like it's it's relaxing, man. It's a relaxing thing to do. You know, absolutely, and, uh, man. Like everybody loves a good massage, don't they? Yeah, that's it. Yeah, but most people don't think you can do it to yourself. You can. It's not. Granted, it's yeah, not, it's not as good as a proper massage from from a massage therapist, but you can still do a lot um, to your to yourself, really. You know. Absolutely. Yeah, I was I was thinking exactly the same. Like it sounded so strange, like giving yourself a massage, mm. but then it, it made for me it made total sense as well. We also be, because you know in China the acupuncture and a foot, ref, a foot reflexology and that sort of stuff, you can easily give yourself a, mas a foot massage. Mm. And it has so many benefits, man. We know that if you get a massage or, in the, in, or you do it yourself, serotonin is released, cortisol again is drops, mm. all these neurochemicals, man. We have to take, yeah. a, it, it's yeah. a great way to, uh, to be in charge, to, take, yeah. to, to really take care of your own well-being. 
Yeah, awesome, man. And before we move on from sleep, you mentioned one more thing that, that I noticed. You, you said having that consistent routine, and you said you mentioned weekends. We, we, just, we just try to say weekends, make sure it's the same as it yeah. is d- during the week because most people tend to, in the, in, the, in the normal Western world, we kind of go off the rails at the weekends. People end up going out either partying or staying up late because they're not working the next day. Oh, it's time for a long lie. But what does that then do? Does that, that kind of mucks up your your cycle doesn't it then your circadian rhythm a little bit it yeah yeah it kind of disturbs your rhythm indeed mm. yeah it does and um so it's very important to also in the weekends wake up early mm. and what it, it for me it also would make a lot of sense to wake up early in the morning in the weekends because everybody wants to enjoy their weekends as much as possible mm-hmm. so why, why, why wake up at 11 a.m. In, yeah. during the weekend? Why not wake up early and go for a Saturday, Sunday morning walk? And those valuable things. I understand that in the evening, it's, very so, it's, it's super social. Every, the evening is a time to catch up with friends, etc. Yeah. But, 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 but why not do some yoga together in the morning? Mm-hmm. Why, not, why not meet at 6 a.m. or 7 a.m. Yeah. and do yoga? I, I'm, these thoughts are maybe... They they may they might sound a bit, uh, not unknown, but bit, how how would I say a bit, a bit strange, a bit weird, but it's. Pro, it's pro- it, do you think it's more of a is it more of an Eastern philosophy, an Eastern sort of practice to get up and do some kind of meditation, yoga in the morning, drink green tea, and 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 that, and then we'll go to bed. But we have this this Western culture of going out late, partying staying up watching watching movies and and let's face it not not a lot happens in the evening really does it let's um nah, <laughs> let's be honest not, man not, yeah no, for, for, for me at least uh it also depends on the person obviously yeah for me yeah, uh, a sunrise walk is more valuable than a late night in the club yeah yeah man and I, I i agree you know and this is a tricky balance because as we know for for your overall health social a social life, a good social life is important as well. It's one of the major, major sort of cornerstones of a, of a healthy life. But, um, but I suppose it's a, it's a perspective switch, switch, isn't it? It's changing that perspective over to you can do stuff during the day instead of in the evening. But when you said, um, so keep that routine the same, let's just think about for the listeners out there that there are some people that, that stay up late at the weekend. They have a, an, an, a, a weekly Friday evening um don't know movie or, or whatever it is or they stay up and have a, have a pizza or something should they then focus on getting more sleep by by staying a bit in a bit better a bit later the next day or should they just get up at the same time again and and mm. sacrifice that couple because this, this is an area that i struggle with sometimes to, to figure out what is more optimal so as a coach try to some people say well i like to have my saturdays as a long lie and i'm i'm always tempted to say it's a bad idea because if you want to have optimal energy every day throughout the week, you want to be waking up in the same sort of hour window as what I generally recommend. Mm-hmm. What's, what's your views on that? What do you think? Yeah, I absolutely agree. Uh, when you, uh, when you said that the balance, balance is key. Mm-hmm. Um, for me, it doesn't, for me as well, it doesn't mean that I, I never meet friends in the evening, but it's always uh, almost a trade-off, right? Mm. And for, again, for every person, it's different. And having that, that social time with friends in the evening, again, as well, yeah, for well, like you mentioned, for well-being, human well-being is mm. super important. At the end of the day, we're, uh, we're social species. And um, so you're basically asking me what i would recommend if someone would ask if i if if that person wants to stay up late right so let's the, yeah let's, let's just let's just say they want to they, they stay up at till till midnight every friday but they get every, up okay, but they get yeah, they yeah. get up at they get up at 6 a.m every morning but they go to bed at 10 o'clock every night except friday they go to bed at, at midnight should they then get up a couple hours later and have some extra sleep or should they just sacrifice that bit of sleep and mm-hmm. keep their, their rhythm and what, what do you think so taking into into account the idea that this person that 
it is important to this person to do this every Friday, mm-hmm. I would say um, get that couple extra hours of sleep then. Mm-hmm. Uh, but if a person, if that person also finds the the routine important, then obviously you would, you could maybe say, hey, well, why would you do it every Friday? Why not once every two weeks? Mm. So it really depends on a person. How important is it that you, in this uh, example, um, meet friends every Friday until 12, uh, mm. until midnight? Why not go, why not go back mm. to your home at, late, at let's say 10 p.m.? So mm. you can have, you, you can wake up a bit earlier the day afterwards. Yeah. So it really depends on, 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 the, on, the, on the person, I would say. Yeah, but the best thing to do would be to go to their friends and say, let's go in the morning and go for a walk instead. <laughs> that, you know, but yeah, like you say, yeah. everybody's individual on that, on that matter. But, um, but I think there is definitely a lot of things we can, def- we can change our perspective on, you know? Um, like I think we- so too, man. Like you mentioned before, you, you, you talked about like what they do in the East, like have that cup of green tea. It's mm-hmm. definitely a cultural difference as well. Mm. In the, uh, so I was in uh, Nepal last year, and they're also in the morning. They were so thoughtful, man. They mm-hmm. wake up. It's 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 much more slow, like more time together. They're not as much on their phone, mm-hmm. and they. I think I just overall think that they're very thoughtful, mm-hmm. and yeah, I think that's a, that's a great way of living, man. Yeah, I love it. And and you mentioned about not being on their phone. What do you do? How, how often do you spend on your phone? So in the morning, do you look at your phone or do you wait till a certain point in the day and then in the evening, do you turn it off or what, what do you generally? Yes. So my, my, my phone is always on flight mode while hmm. sleeping. And uh, when I wake up, I, um, I write down in my dream journal, as I mentioned before, and then I, I, I listen to uh, uh, a motivational speech. The last couple of weeks, I've been listening to motivational speeches. So then I put on my phone, but I don't check messages. I only go to YouTube. I, uh, I, 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 I listen to a speech and I do some yoga. Um, I do my whole morning routine. And I, it's, it's, for me, it's also my uh, bedroom is a no phone zone. And uh, like it. so there's no... Um, there's, there's no use of the phone besides uh, like going to YouTube and listen to a mo- motivational speech. Yeah. I, I, I do check my, uh, my aura ring score sometimes, mm-hmm. but I try to postpone it because yeah. <laughs> as you know, it, uh, it, can, it can have a, a big impact on your mood as well. Yeah. When you see that your heart rate variability drop to 60, yeah. um, for instance, but uh yeah, I try to have an, a, a no phone zone, and uh, I think that's definitely important as well that you set your day up in a proactive way instead of a reactive mm. way. Yeah, like, definitely. Don't don't go to Instagram and scroll down because you you you, you put yourself in a in a reactive state, mm. and it's so important to be proactive, to decide first thing in the morning that you take charge of your own thoughts Mm -hmm. and not Facebook or not what your friends did in the club the night before you wake up and you decide, okay, today it's going to be a healthy day. I woke up. It's a great day. Instead of going to Instagram, damn, did this person, but like another, I don't know, and start yourself comparing to people on social media. I think that's important. There's not many people that I message and I don't get a response for a few days. And I love it because, because I'm the same. Like I don't respond, I don't respond to a lot of messages. Sometimes, sometimes I won't respond for like for days or whatever a time. And, and this, this is another thing is changing perspective. It's not being rude and it's not being selfish. We live in a, we live in a technology age, don't we? Where instant, 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 but it doesn't have to be like that. That's a choice people are making. People are making that choice whether they know it or not is, is quite often a subconscious thing. But like you say, as soon as you get into that message, flying to messages, people spend so long on their phones, man, don't they? It's just, it's crazy. 
it's crazy yeah. and it's and some people i i coach people and i sometimes try and explain to them like don't don't rush to get back to my messages don't rush to get you know if, if that's what they're trying to do and they just have this thing where it's like oh no i have to respond you know most people if i message if i give somebody a message i've got a message back within like the minute usually and it's like greg i messaged greg about this podcast last was it last week i said let's do the podcast this week man let's do it and i'm like and then he didn't get back to me for like two days later. And I'm like, but that's, it's great. I love that. I love that, that we have this kind of, we've been, what we've been messaging now for what over, probably over a year. And um, and we have some great conversations going on and the voice notes and that and talking about all this stuff. But sometimes it's like, we'll go days or weeks without even re- responding. And it's, but that's good, man. You've got to be able to do that. And, and people have got to be able to, if there's something urgent, then yeah, fair enough, pick up the phone and phone someone. But 99 times at 100 it's not an urgent thing is it it's like it's just naff naff going on yeah so i i I totally agree with what you're saying man definitely definitely yeah yeah awesome man um yeah so we've got some deep diving in there into into sleep what else we're going to chat about then so nature you mentioned getting out in nature that's that's a big thing and and living like an, an active healthy lifestyle um, that's something that's quite important to you as well, isn't it? So mm-hmm. talk about that a little bit, what you, what you do. Yeah, sure, sure. So at the moment, it's actually interesting you're, you're, you're asking that. I'm, uh, I'm, I'm reading a book which, which is called uh, What Doesn't Kill Us. And I, I, I can't recall the, um, the author at the moment. I have to look it up. But it's such an interesting book. And it's about how environmental circumstances circumstances influence our um our well-being basically and uh, it's so interesting it's about exposing yourself to the cold going into nature all the things that we talk about and um so what what i'm doing for me it's valuable to stay close as connected to to nature as possible it always makes me happy, you know, like walking in nature just makes me happy. And I'm, 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 where I want to, where, where do I want to go with this? Um, for instance, living in the city is um, most of the most of the population of uh, are, are in big cities, right? But again, if you go back to nature, do you just feel different? And also, like I here in here in the woods, I uh, I run every morning and just hear the birds chirping in the morning. It's just so calming, and uh, it just gives me it gives me a sense of aliveness. I think that's basically what I'm trying to say. Mm-hmm. It gives me it gives me such a feeling that I am that I'm part of nature. Mm-hmm. That I'm actually that I'm also an, an animal at the end of the day right mm. and it really makes ma- ma- makes me feel close to to what i am and i think that's that's that that's beautiful mm. especially now with the um you mentioned it's springtime now where you are it's springtime here as well the, the sun keeps moving through the window and almost blinding me it's great mm-hmm. man it's um getting out i'm, I'm spending most of the time I almost actually set this this up outside as well today, um, but it's a bit. It's quite cold still here, but it's, um, it, it's, it's here nice. in the, here in the Netherlands too. In the Netherlands yeah, too, yeah. but like going out into nature, you can learn so much from it as well, man. Like some of my um, most profound uh, lessons that I've learned are when I when I walk to the when I walk in the woods, mm. when my when my mind gets the opportunity to calm down and uh, be, in, be inspired as well. Like there was a time, la- I, I love autumn and autumn is one of my, I think, I, I'm not sure if, I'm, if it's my favorite season, but September, October, when the, when the trees change color to like red, when it gets a bit chilly, mm. it's, it, it's a season that I, enjoy so much and last autumn here in here in the cabin was fantastic every morning I, I i went outside and i went for a run and there was this uh this bench under a tree where i used to sit down and it was always like after running like 
when my mind was empty, when I was full in, con in, in connection with my body, that I felt such a, a connection to, like, to, to the universe as well. I'm just going to say it like that. Like hands on, I, I used to sit down on the ground as well, like hands on the ground, body on the ground, like grounding. And those were the moments where I, where I was inspired. And when I learned a lot, basically, man, like we can go into the th mm. things that, things that I learned from nature, but uh, there's always something that, uh, that is in so inspiring and calming, man. It's mm. wow. Yeah, man. It's, um, it's powerful. It's not a lot of people know this, but there's, I'm not sure the exact statistics, but something to do with decreasing your blood pressure and, and heart rate. You can literally just step into nature. In fact, you don't even need to step into nature. You can literally look at a picture of mm. a tree or a, a, a picture of a lake. So in your house, you've got some plants here. You can, have, you can have some plants in your house. If you're feeling a bit stressed, man, and you can, you can use breath as well, can't you? You can just look at that and breathe and your heart rate and blood pressure will actually come down and you will put your body into more of a parasympathetic state and uh, mm -hmm. I can see Greg's got his um, for anybody who's watching on YouTube we'll be able to see he's got his essential oils out man it's like all these little these little tips yeah. so man we're, we're we're getting into some good stuff here and we could chat about so much couldn't we but yeah I wanna we... go ahead yeah go on man I, 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 I didn't know that actually that looking at a picture of, of a tree yeah. can already help you so much but I want to talk about uh, uh, forest bathing as well here yeah because Forest bathing is a, uh, is a concept from Japan. Over there, it's called Shinrin-yoku. And doctors actually see it as, as they prescribe it to patients. If, if someone's sick or has a specific disease, like the doctor can prescribe going to the woods because it's so healthy. Because the reason that, that you say is your heart rate drops and uh decreases and that's amazing, uh, that's amazing man i never knew that it, never, yeah. yeah it's super interesting man like the sense of the the smell of the trees it does so much to your brain as well you you get so calm and yeah. in japan a doctor can pre prescribe it to you yeah it's, it's I, basically I, I, medicine i'm just i'm just making an assumption here but as as the japanese and eastern medicine obviously they do have a lot more japanese eastern and, and ayurvedic medicine is a lot more nature-based using natural things that people in the western world would be like a bit like well now nah, i'm just gonna take my, my drugs off the doctor you know and, and i'm not you know I'm not, I'm not bashing doctors or pharmaceuticals or anything you know but um they have their place as well of course but that's powerful man so they, so they actually prescribe it so i wonder i wonder what else they prescribe then you know like you wouldn't get that in the, you wouldn't get that in the uk i don't know what the netherlands man you wouldn't get a doctor saying yeah just uh just go for nah. a walk in the woods man twice a day yeah there you go. Make sure the side effects are, are a great life and, yeah. and love and joy, man. And you just be happy all the time. So just be careful because your wife might get a bit annoyed with you being so happy all the time, you know? <laughs> no, in, 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 in the East, they're much more preventive instead of reactive. Yeah. Like here, like I didn't study medicine. I'm not an expert in the field of, of medicine. I'm not a doctor, but it, it seems that in the East, they're much more preventive instead of reactive when it comes to health. In, in Japan, kangen water is molecular hydrogen, basically uh, a water that, um, that is filtered, so to say, electrolyzed, I have to say, is a medicine as well. well water is a medicine, a specific mm. type of water. Mm. It's, it's much more preventive, like it's much more holistic mm. and that has everything to do with the fact that in the west we have um uh a way of living that does more harm to our bodies than in the east fast food like the things that we say alcohol it's it's a totally different lifestyle man yeah man and uh i've actually been using the hydrogen water lately i've been i've been looking at this stuff for a while and um, i've actually got the, the there's different methods of it isn't there i've actually got the hydrogen tablets that you put in and i've been i've been drinking it every other day for a couple of weeks now it's very hard to say hard to quantify these things you know 
Mm-hmm. But there's definitely something to it, I think. There's definitely something to it. There's a lot of good research behind it. There's a lot of mixed... At the minute, there's a lot of mixed research, as there tends to be with something new that's, c- that's coming out, but it's definitely verging more on the on the good side. But like you say, man, that... And again, it seems to be we keep going back to this, this whole perspective shift of preventative medicine compared to wait until it's too late. Yeah, let's get the drinking alcohol, eating pizzas, not being active, not looking after those those four pillars that you mentioned in the morning, looking after your your you know, your heart, your mind, your soul, and and then you've got to go and take drugs and it's like man, makes you, the situation almost worse at some, could, in some yeah, cases. Yeah. And it's like why why make your life suffer in that way when you could have just prevented it with these with these tools. But unfortunately we don't live in in a world that supports that as much at the minute. Mm-hmm. Hopefully we'll go that way eventually, but Exactly, that's what I wanted to say. It seems that a shift is occurring, man. There, a mm. shift is occurring, and uh, it's it's needed. Yeah, yeah, we're getting there, man. Yeah, that's really good. That's powerful. Forest bathing, I love it. I I love spending time out in the forest as well, man. Oh, man me too. And the I, I, yeah. I, I, yeah, you live near the mountains. That's so that's so yeah. cool, man. Like yeah. I love the smell from the earth after rain, man. Mm. Here in the Netherlands, occasionally it rains. There, there's a specific word for it. It's called it's petro, petrichor. It's yeah, a word for, yeah. for the smell of the earth after rain. It's wow, man. Particularly after it's been a really dry spell and then it rains mm. and it's like, pff, yeah, it's amazing, isn't it? Yeah. It's, it's funny how, how powerful these little things are, but I suppose they're not as. Do you, do you think it's because they're not quite as profound? Like you don't always immediately notice the effects of maybe for us because we're more aware of it you know we can step out into a forest and be like it's great you know breathe it in yeah whereas for some people it's like maybe they just need to start adopting a practice of doing it consistently and then over time it's like they notice the changes you know it's it's not like taking a drug you take a drug sometimes you can take a drug and it's like sorts you out straight away you know or 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 whatever makes you get you high you know for some people so it's yeah, not, it's not as profound, but then it doesn't come with all these side, this long list of side effects, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, I think it's also uh, short term versus long term mm. thinking. Yeah, because well, okay, where I want to where I want to go with this, um, people, some people are 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 looking for um, hacks, so to say, not. Mm shortcuts shortcuts to improve their well-being and i think well-being um is something that you achieve on the long term like you can do all these different things and expect to be healthy tomorrow but i think it's a it's 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 too easy to say that it's a lifestyle change you have to make but Mm. it's so it's your it's your whole perspective on the way you want to live your life and Maybe indeed, when I go to the woods, it's definitely it's a huge joy. Like when I breathe in what you're saying, it's 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 a huge joy. Whereas a person that is not as conscious about their health might go into the woods and, and think, well, well, this is okay, mm. and is not as enthusiastic. But then I think once this once the person wants to has has more long term vision on on what they want to achieve with their health, and that doesn't mean that you need to become muscular or have to have a uh, a perfect body it means that every time you you step outside and go into the woods you enjoy it as much as possible i think i think that, that that's a bit of my perspective on it i love that man love it that's a great perspective and um yeah so i guess we'll i guess we'll finish up with with talking about a couple of things because there are obviously a lot of tools you're using, different kind of biohacks and stuff, so to speak, that you're, I don't know, biohacking, you know, health optimization, I think, is, is the way you put it. I like that better, to be honest. So what, let's give the, the listeners some things to take away from this then. Um, it can be stuff we've talked about already, or it can be something a bit different. What would you say are your top top things just now that you're using for health optimization that you think would be Oh, there's there's a lot, there's a lot. All right, so so first of all, I think 
when I think, uh, for me, biohacking, it sounds a bit extreme, but it's basically taking charge of your outer environment to uh, improve your well-being. Mm -hmm. it, it, it's a word in the dictionary as well. And it's like, I see wearing clothes as biohacking as well, because you, mm -hmm. you, you regulate your body temperature. Like we're biohacking all the, the time if we, uh, if we, if we put our, our rooms at like a certain temperature. I see that as bi a biohacking too, but most of, pe most of the people, when they think about biohacking, it means that they, that people put a certain chip in their, in their arm to, <laughs> to monitor glucose levels or <laughs> I don't know, that yeah. sort of stuff. Yeah. So for, for me, the term biohacking is not as extreme as most people think. I think, and I think that's uh, yeah, just something that I that I wanted to say as well. Uh, I, I during the <laughs> during the interview, I've been uh, um, smelling uh, this essential oil, which has the fragrance of sandalwood. It's mm -hmm. it's a bio, for me. It's a, it's a biohack too, because it um, it has an influence on my on my senses. In this in this example, <laughs> my, my 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 smell and. It makes me feel better. For me, it's a biohack too, my a biological hack. I'm gonna try uh, that, man. I'm gonna try that because I've got. Oil. I don't think I have sandalwood, but I have. Um, I have pine oil, Scotch pine needle oil, um, and I have some other ones as well, lavender and stuff. So I might. I might try. Uh, it's it's great because what's, you, what's, what's your favorite oils? Is that your favorite one, or do you use different ones for different things, or is it just Sa sandalwood? Is my favorite. It's, yeah. I, I love those earthy uh, fragrances. Like uh, mm. I, I never uh, use pine oil, but but I can imagine that mm. uh, it, it it smells fantastic too. It smells love, a little bit. It smells a little bit like um, pine oil. Smells a little bit like disinfectant because you get <laughs> pine disinfectant. And I never yeah, noticed yeah, this. Yeah, I, yeah. I got it and I was like, oh, it smells great. And um, because it's a great pine oil is great um, for people that are people that are interested. If you if you don't want to use the alcohol gels all the time, pine oil is actually a natural. Um, it's hand sanitizer and it's, mm -hmm. it's good for other things as well but um, it's great for cleaning cleaning your house and stuff and it's, yep. it's, in, it's in cleaning products as well hence the smell because it was actually my wife Amy that said um, I, put, I put some on my beard and I rubbed it <laughs> and it goes oh, how, how do you like the smell of, I smell like a forest and she goes yeah. uh, and she was like you smell like a toilet. <laughs> I, said, oh. I, said, I was like, what do you mean? And I was like, oh yeah, so it does. But it doesn't, it kind of does. It's like a less chemically smell of it. You know? so, so if I don't, if I don't want to chat to her for a day, I just, I just rub it in, you know, and then it keeps, but, keeps her away. <laughs> but that, that is funny, man. That's funny. Yeah. But, um, so, okay. So w which products or gadgets uh, I'm using or that I would recommend to people? Yeah. That, uh, yeah. Go on, let's so, go a few. First of all, um, the Aura Ring. We've we've talked about it, and uh, during this interview, it measures your heart rate variability. It gives you an accurate analysis on uh, on your sleep cycles, the deep sleep, REM sleep, light sleep, and the awake state that we talked about before. It is a fantastic device to to measure what's happening in your body. And what's also funny is that you can um, discover patterns. We, we talked about how food influences your sleep. You can do little researches with yourself while using this device. So this is definitely a device that I would recommend uh, other people using too. You mentioned so, something earlier on about the owner ring as well. Um, obviously we're not gonna go too deep into all the different things here for this episode. We could always go further into them in a, another time. Otherwise, we'd be here all day talking, you know. Yep. <laughs> um, but you mentioned earlier on that you don't check it first thing in the morning. Now, this is something that mm -hmm. we discussed when when we first we first got the aura rings about about what last summer, didn't we? And yeah, we yeah. Chatting about how we're using them quite quickly, I'd realised that if I was checking my data in the morning, as soon as I got up, and it said your readiness is score is low, take it easy today. I'm like, but I feel okay, and I had a big training run planned or something, or a big workout planned. A lot of the time I would be tempted to put it off or I'd go out on the planned run and then I would take it easier than a planned to. Mm, yeah. So, so yeah. now I, I try to, and I think that's what you're about to say is, and I try to listen to my body first. So I, I meditate in the morning or just meditate. I basically just do a couple of breaths in the morning with my eyes closed and then listen to how the body feels. 
and go from there. And then I might, if I feel a bit off, something doesn't feel right. I've got to sort of check the ring then and be like, right, put the mm-hmm. two and two together. If I yeah. feel good and everything's fine, I'll maybe check it in the afternoon after or in the evening after I've done my training. And be That's like, pretty late. Yeah, sometimes I do it in the yeah. evenings and I'll be like, and, and then I can look back and go, I trained hard today on top of a low readiness score. Then the next morning, I'll check it in the morning because I'll be like, right, let's see what's happening here. Our mm-hmm. readiness is down again. Right, now we're going to adjust things. You know, so mm-hmm. it's not... I see, I see, I see. So, do you follow a similar kind of pattern to that then? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I used to check it first thing in the morning, but right now I first uh, set, set my intention uh, in the morning too. And then I check it afterwards. Mm-hmm. I, f- I first, uh, I, I don't let these scores influence my mood. I, I used to do this yeah. in the beginning. Like when I had like a, a low heart rate variability, I was like, how, uh, how? This is like, mm-hmm. I, I don't like this. I was like, nah. And then you're, if you check it first thing in the morning and your heart rate variability is low, your mood, yeah. is, my, my mood was always a bit, yeah. No, I, I wasn't as happy right now. In the first thing in the morning, I just say to myself, "Greg, man, you're healthy. You wake up. I'm happy. Let's go." And then I check it afterwards. And if my heart rate variability is low, I'm like, "Well, I'm still happy. Yeah. I'm still I'm still healthy. I can like." It's a different approach. Yeah, man. So we're getting too too scientific here for everybody, but just to give them an idea of what heart rate variability is, it's it's a measure of essentially it's your it's to do with your heart rate. But everybody's is different. Everybody, so if anybody gets one of these rings or a device that measures your HRV, your heart rate variability, athletes use it, and it tells if you're recovered or if you're, if you're not recovered. And essentially, everybody's is different. So mm-hmm. if yours is lower than so, you can't compare it to anybody else's because it it's very different. It's, yeah. it's a very individual thing, isn't it? Um, just in case, because we were having a bit of a, it's a pretty tricky thing to try and understand if you're not, if you're not an expert in that kind of field, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Um, I just wanted to throw that out there. Um, yeah, no, it's good to let people know, man. Absolutely. Yeah. And um, yeah, Aura Ring's great, isn't it? It's a great tool. Uh, yeah. Anything, anything else you you would uh, you'd recommend then, or? or yeah, for sure. Uh, but before before we move on from the Aura Ring, actually, the other thing I want to mention is is the Aura Ring. Some people might look at this and go, what, "It's so expensive. It's so much more accurate than." Maybe there's better ones out there now, but most of the most of the smart watches, yeah, the stuff that you get, they, they just they're nowhere near as, as near as accurate as that. Absolutely. And actually, yeah, absolutely. Another, another thing, and we're not sponsored by Aura Ring, so we're not going to go nope. too much, and we're not going to dig them up too much. But <laughs> um, but they're really good for detecting illnesses and stuff coming on, and they're actually doing a lot of research just now, aren't they, in the background where they can actually detect a viral infection or something before it comes on, which I experienced myself. I, I actually, this told me that my body temperature was high. And mm-hmm. then I came down with something a couple of days later, like a viral infection. And I was like, oh, that's pretty Our nose. And it did. Yeah, it did. It, it, it was yeah. days before and I felt fine, you know, so. Interesting. Definitely interesting. Mm-hmm. Definitely. And they're doing uh, like studies on Corona as well, mm-hmm. on COVID. That's right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the MBA is using the ring, so. Uh, yeah, we're not sponsored, but we're uh, just big, big fans. We used it first, man. We used it first. Aura, remember sponsorship yeah. deals. Yeah. Remember who? You, remember who your true? Uh, remember who your true first customers were? <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, no, so Aura is definitely uh, one thing. Then those blue light blocking glasses that we uh, mm. that we talked about earlier. They're they're huge. Mm. They are. Uh, very very effective when it comes to um, sleep sleeping well so i would recommend using blue light blocking glasses either from true dark or uh, swan wicks swansies yeah. uh, i've got i've got swannies yeah the swan wick one yeah is, uh... i i i got the true dark like they're different yeah like i'm i'm not an expert in the field when it comes to the uh the the quality of these products mm-hmm. so Yes, there are new pro- products upcoming. I have a brand that's con- going to send their products to me as well, and they're $30, right. and it's not as expensive. So um, because I'm not a technical expert, there's one way to try to uh, judge it, so to say, and that's by comparing them. Mm. And um, 
as a consumer, I think that's important to do. And with the aura ring for us, it's like super, super simple because you get sleep data. But I think for the consumer, it's so important that if they buy uh, tr specific uh, blue light blocking glasses for $5, mm -hmm. that they really ask themselves after using the product, hey, does this improve my well-being or doesn't it? Mm -hmm. And obviously there's a placebo effect as well. And I think mm -hmm. this is a total different topic, but placebo is huge, I think. Mm -hmm. And uh, we have to take into account this too. So as a consumer, I think, um, again, for us it's easy because we can actually measure the data mm -hmm. after using different type of blue light blocking glasses. But as a consumer, I think it's very important to ask yourself the question after using the product, um, did this improve my well-being? Mm -hmm. And for me, it's always important to have something like quantitative data so I can also show that it, it improved my well-being. The same with molecular hydrogen. We talked about this. I, I drink it too in the morning and I feel mm -hmm. energized. I feel more vibrant. Mm -hmm. But I want quantitative data to be able to show as well, hey, this actually works. And you can see it based on these different var variables. Mm -hmm. And it's Kangen, so, yeah. it's Kangen water you're using. Is that right? Is that the... So it's pretty interesting. Um, so at the moment, I am um, developing my own. Uh, I'm not developing my own product. I'm, um, I'm creating my own business. And it's a, uh, it's a water electrolyzer. Mm -hmm. And it basically uh, adds a molecular um, part, hydrogen. It adds, it infuses hydrogen mm -hmm. to the water, so to say. And this is a whole uh, progress taking place in, the, in a specific membrane um, in a bottle. And it's not Kangen water, it's electrolyzed water. Those are two mm -hmm. di different type of things. Like you have all right. different sorts of water. You have mm -hmm. alkaline water mm -hmm. and um, all that sort of stuff. So I am drinking electrolyzed water at the moment. Mm -hmm. And it is comparable to Kangen, yes. Mm -hmm. But it's just a slight difference because the Kangen machines are pretty big. And the water that I drink is, uh, the water is electrolyzed electrolyzed in a hydrogen generator, which mm -hmm. is a bottle of where you can put 420 milliliters of water in. And uh, it's, de it's definitely comparable, like what happens within the platinum. Uh, um, so the process is more or less equal, but then only on a smaller, mm. on a smaller, uh, it, it, it's it's not in a big machine. Yeah. It's it's a, it's a bottle. And this, is this all still in like a testing phase? Is, is there a website or anything for this stuff yet, or is it all kind of is it all just in the process just now? Just, no, we're, we're, the, we we already have the product. We're collaborating with a, uh, with a company in Canada, right. and um, so the product is already there. We didn't develop it ourselves. Yeah. But right yeah. now um, we're creating. A, we're going to create a brand about it, and. Ah, um, right. Yeah, I'm, just, uh, I'm just thinking we can maybe leave some links in the in the show notes if people are interested in, in checking it out because I think water is a is a major and we can we can chat about this again in detail on a, on a further on a future episode but um mm -hmm. it's a powerful powerful tool man that we can use yeah and no absolutely and if we're, if we're going to talk about water indeed man uh, a future episode is highly necessary because there's so much to it man hydrogen oh, yeah, yeah. Hi hydrogen molecules like it's the smallest particle in the universe Mm. it's and you know that our body consists it's so simple our body consists for the major part is hydrogen is, is water mm. yeah so we have to make sure that the, the quality of water we put in our bodies mm. is um is high and if you put like good quality water in your body it can fight free radicals mm -hmm. you can be more energized and there's so many benefits to it, man. Yeah, man. I think I think people are gaining. There's more of an awareness about water quality now, but I still think it's one of them things again where it doesn't really the effects of drinking chlorinated city water. We're, we're used to it because yeah, we're used to it. 
that's it. You, you don't notice that effect straight away. It's, it becomes a it tends to be more subtle, and it's it's more like chronic conditions further down the line that that, are, that these things can cause. And you might mm. not even relate the two. You might just go, oh well, it's it's a genetic thing that I got this this disease. It's like, well, actually, maybe if you hadn't been drinking all the chemicals in your water for so long, yeah, you know, no, it's definitely. like. Absolutely. Yeah. So, and it's it's like, how do they? Again, when, when these companies are testing the water and stuff, they're saying, "Well, it's safe because look, it's it's perfectly safe to drink. We've we've it tested all these tests. There's, there's no, no chemicals in it. There's, there's no immediate effect, you know. But so it's a huge difference in in quality of water, man, man. To really feel hydrated, like being feeling hydrated. There he goes drinking a sip of his water. Mm. Purified, oh, purified, electro electrolyzed, mineralized. No, but I, I really feel the difference mm. after drinking totally. this this water. I, I, I it, it's so difficult to explain because like really feeling hyd hydrated, mm -hmm. it's such a different feeling than uh, than I had before when when I drank regular water from the tab. I mm. felt great, but I, I it's just that I feel better at the moment. Mm. And I feel more. It's it's it's. Re I feel more energized. That's basically yeah, it. Yeah. More it's vibrant. A, it's a powerful tool, man. It's definitely one to one that you can dive deep down a rabbit hole on as well. And um, mm -hmm. there's a lot of different opinions on water. So technical stuff. as well, man. Yeah. So technical. Um. I mean, I guess one of the simplest things people can do is is just at least buy like some kind of filter system or something. You know, like mm -hmm. something that's taken out most of the the trash that's in your water base essentially um, yeah no absolutely but uh, but we'll, we'll try and leave some links for some stuff in the in the show notes for people to to have a look at and um so so you've mentioned a few things there um one le one last thing only like if you're interested in the topic of water and you're listening to this don't don't hesitate to to uh to to send me a, a message as well because this is an, a topic that i'm highly interested in so that's mm. just something that i wanted to say to the audience yeah, before, yeah awesome man uh, yeah and i think it's definitely to the next it's definitely one we'll, we'll talk about in a future episode in, in more detail and we'll dive into all the different types of water you can you can get the different i mean there's there's all sorts of different purification methods you've got distilled reverse osmosis uh, there's filters there's charcoal there's all, all these different carbon filters so we can we can chat about all sorts of stuff um mm -hmm. and uh yeah and so you'd mentioned um the the blue blocking glasses the or a ring so for tools people to consider and have you got another another tool that you'd health optimization tool that you'd recommend people try yeah. out or... so the, the the third and last thing that i want to uh, uh to mention here is it's, it's not actually a product or gadget but indeed a really it, it's 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 a tool and it's intermittent fasting or even fasting so it's something you do it's not something uh it's not a product or something fasting it's a whole it's a super interesting topic like there's much uh people are talking about it like a lot lately about intermittent fasting more and more people are starting to know the benefits of what happens while you fast and this is also something this is a tool that i use and um, I've been I've been feeling so much better after implementing the the strategy almost of intermittent fasting, man. I uh, again I wake up at five a.m. some or five thirty at the moment, and I the more when I wake up is the moment when I feel most um, energized. Where I've, when, I I'm not the type of person that lays in bed that hits the snooze button. When I wake up, I'm super fresh. And this has everything to do with the with the uh, window of eight hours in which I eat that that we talked about before. Mm -hmm. Like intermittent fasting, I think is such a strong biohack. Mm -hmm. It's such a strong tool that you can use for health optimization. And um, I would, I'm not going to say that I would recommend it to everybody. I have to be very cautious here because there there is circumstances in which a person might not have as much benefits while fasting because Dave Asprey as you know has a new book called um, Fast This Way and he also um, here he explains the way you can do uh, fasting uh, pretty well and also the dangers if you don't use it 
uh, if you don't use the tool correctly, so to say. Mm -hmm. So for me, fasting at the moment has, has been a huge, um, has huge positive effects on my well-being for sure. And basically, what happens here, I, I can I can dive into like the, what happens on a technical level very briefly, but I don't want to be too superficial. But I want to give the audience like more of a uh, the basic idea, so to say, what what's happening here. So mm -hmm. your cells fill with are, are most of our cells are filled with glucose. Um, especially in the West, because we eat so, so many carbs and, and, sh and, sh and sugars, um, which are then um, transferred to glucose in our cells. And what happens well we, when we fast, we start to uh, burn these glucose molecules in our cells. And because we, we don't eat, but we still need energy. So we need something to burn. So we have energy, which is glucose. And then, because most of us haven't have excess glucose in our cells, our cells finally get the opportunity to, um, how would I say, to get rid of the the excess glucose. And and that and that's very important because at some point when you do, for instance, a keto diet, which we can talk, which is an all different topic or when you fast for a longer uh, period of time, you start to burn uh, ketones instead of glucose. And that has different other benefits, as you know, as well. And this, uh, this is basically the main, the main idea behind fasting and um, why fasting for a longer period of time can be beneficial too. Yeah, it's a powerful tool, man. I think you, you mentioned as well, to be cautious using it. Um, one thing that I've one thing that I've realised um, through my research into it and experimentation, but more so to, into the research, is people that should be aware of fasting or be extra cautious are people with obviously eating disorders. So that's one thing I would recommend. People with um, people with eating disorders, people who are incredibly active, so professional athletes and stuff need to be a bit careful because you need to ensure you're you're not under fueling yourself as well. There's a, there's a balance there. And there are ways that you can still fast and be a high performing athlete. I'm not saying you can't do that, but that's another, another thing. And females as well, sometimes have to be a bit more, bit more cautious than males do just due to the, the biological nature of how the body works. Um, but yeah, it's a powerful tool, man. And so, so what's, what's, your, what's your fasting protocol just now? What are you, what are you following with your intermittent fasting? Yes, so an ideal day for me would be um, having an eating window from 10 a.m. to 6 p.m., mm -hmm. eight hours. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm saying ideal because it's, it's not every day is the same for me. Sometimes I, I, I have my breakfast at nine. And I think this is also important to be met metabolically flexible, to stay metabolically flexible. Mm -hmm. um, so for me, 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. is ideal. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I'm, yeah, and then, you know, make sure that you don't only eat French fries, obviously, and Oreos during the day. When you do this, make sure micronutrients are in check, macronutrients are in check. Mm -hmm. So this is also very important, like have, have a great variety of different vegetables, legumes, fruits, etc. Mm -hmm. And um, for me, that's the way to go, like, you have a salad and have sweet potatoes and that sort of stuff like the, the good mm. stuff that you get out of nature mm -hmm. yeah yeah it's powerful man i think my opinion is some people it's some people it works great and there are benefits i think some people it's it's maybe not it's either not the right time for them to do it or they just need to be a bit more careful what i've, I've seen people in the past do intermittent fasting and like you say go for the wrong types of foods now having this idea in your head that you're putting your food into an eight hour window or a six, even a six hour window and you can just eat as much as you want in that window it doesn't necessarily it's, it's still calories in calories out at the end of the day isn't it so um but yeah man but you mentioned as well doing extended fasting so do you do, you do like a is it 24 hour fasting sometimes that you, that you yeah sometimes incorporate sometimes. yeah 24 yeah. or uh, even 36 
Yeah, and that's mainly and that's, and that's mainly for the for the health benefits in in terms of autophagy, long um yep exactly long-term health and all that sort of stuff. Yeah, yeah, so. yeah. And also for me, it's a way to change my relationship relationship to food because after you do a 24, 36 hour fast, you, you become so much more conscious about mm-hmm. what you actually put in your body. Mm-hmm. And this is so interesting. Every time when I uh, have breakfast, when I break my fast, mm-hmm. after a long fast, um, I'm, I enjoy it so much more. And I'm mm-hmm. so much more conscious about what I put in my body. Yeah. And- Are you still having smoothie bowls for breakfast? At the moment, n- no, because it's pretty cold in here, it, uh, here in the Netherlands. Like spring is coming, summer is coming, so I'm pretty sure those will. Uh, uh, I, I will have them even for dinner. Yeah. I look yeah. forward to it. You have to check but, out Greg's uh, Greg's Instagram. Is some of his smoothie bowls, man? They're 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 epic. You know, like oh man, yeah. I, I love a good smoothie bowl. But I like I really I really um I like the uh, like the new ones you bring here, mm. man. Indeed, like when you do fasting. Um, be knowledgeable about it before you do it. Mm-hmm. Make sure you eat the right stuff. Mm-hmm. And if you're indeed, if you're an athlete and um, you you burn so, a lot of calories, mm-hmm. um, pay attention to it. That's basically uh, mm-hmm. what I say as well, where I definitely agree with you on that point. Yeah, yeah. Powerful stuff, man. Yeah, really good. Um, man, you know what? We could chat about this stuff all day couldn't we and we, we are yeah. we are dragging so on many topics. For them. yeah for so them many one. topics but listen listen guys everybody's listening to this we're going to be back on here we're going to be doing these podcasts pretty regularly because we've got a lot of stuff to be to be talking oh. about so um yes yeah i think i think we'll leave it with one last question for you greg then um especially it's quite fitting for this introductory podcast to, to all the listeners is where do you where do you see yourself in five years time from now then Mm-hmm. five years time uh, great question man great question i am 24 at the moment so i'll be 29 to be really honest i want to become more knowledgeable because right now i'm like i'm, I'm very interested in all these type of topics and i implement the things that i know so like physically um I'm, 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 I'm where I want to be because I really feel energized every day. Like physically, I can track it with the aura ring as well. Like uh, I'm, I'm good to go. I know which routines I have to implement um, to make sure I can uh, live a, a healthy life from 5.30 until 9.30 in the evening. So it's more about like getting to know more and more the ins and outs of every topic. Like uh, learning about it, be, be eager. Uh, I, I don't have like fitness goals. Like I, I, I want to achieve this, this physique for me, it's everything is about the, the inner feeling you, you have about your health and also, um, taking care of your, of your own, of your own body, because at the end of the day, it's the vehicle of your spirit. And I think it's so important to take care of it. And to um i also see it as a bridge between what we're experiencing here as humans and something else uh that we don't know something spiritual basically Mm. and the body is a vehicle really a bridge and i think if you if you're really connected with your body you can also stay connected to to the source of life Love it, so man. for me for me that's also about meditation for instance mm-hmm. so that's my view on 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 health as well so if you ask me like for five years where you want to be i want to be even more connected to my body that i am at the at the moment that that it, it gives me goosebumps a bit man <laughs> i love it man i love it it's um yeah it's it's so important, isn't it, to look after our our bodies? Like you say, this you're, you're gifted with this life, you know. And mm-hmm. it's unfortunately, so many of us we end up down a path where we we kind of we just waste it, you know, waste it away. And then it's a shame. But um, but yeah, what we can do is we can 
optimize our health so mm-hmm. much, you know, and and see where see where it takes us. So I, I think in five years, man, I'm looking forward to seeing uh, to seeing this journey unravel, you know, because yeah. Cause and then on on like on the long term, let's say when you grow when you grow like older in like in your seventies, eighties, nineties, hundreds. I want I want to grow old and be healthy. Like at the moment, I see many older people physically um, having physically having challenges. And for me, one of my health goals is to to be able to to, 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 do, to do a hike in Nepal when I'm like mm-hmm. 80 mm-hmm. in the Himal- Him- Himalayas and to to cycle to France from the Netherlands to France when I'm 75. Mm. That's what health is, like being vital. Yeah, man. I don't know if you saw my um, my recent run that I done on uh, and I done a YouTube yeah. video. I didn't actually yeah. catch the, didn't actually catch any video of the of the man on YouTube. It was on it was on my Instagram story, but the 85 year old man running up and down this this hill. He was uh. like. I like, saw your video like, about Machu Picchu. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, yeah. The, the, the old man, there was, I, I mentioned it in, during the video. I didn't actually catch him on video, but um, in the video, I mentioned the, this, this 85 year old man who just ran up and down the hill, basically mm-hmm. passed, that's hell. That, passed, that's all, hell. Yeah, passed all these young, like, there was like teenagers and, and like people in their 20s there that were huffing and puffing the way up, stopping, and they were just looking at him like, what, what the hell, what's going on here? And it's just, it just shows you, you know. And unfortunately, too many of us just go, just just think, ah, it's 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 just the way it is, you know. There's, there's not anything you can do about it. It's just genetics. It's just, and it's like, no, there's a lot you can do. And there is an element of you might be you might be unlucky, you know. You could you could do. This is what I hear people say a lot of the time. Well, you can do everything in the world. You could do all these great things, but then you could still come down with some horrible disease. And it's like, mm-hmm. that's true. But you can't live your life thinking like that, can you? You know, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. yeah, I agree, definitely. Yeah. It's crazy, man. It's crazy. Well, Greg, it's been a it's been a great chat, man. You know, we could we could go on much longer, couldn't we? But um, we better wrap it up here. Cause, yeah, uh, let's sure do that. We need to get out into nature, don't we? So, um, oh man, I'm gonna walk in the woods. Awesome, awesome. I'm gonna go for my run, my uh, afternoon run. So, well, thanks again for taking the time, Greg. Um, how can all the how can all the listeners reach you? Where's your so Instagram? Yeah, man. So Instagram um, at Green Gregs, um, G E uh, R E G. Sorry, I'm sorry, Green Gregs, G R E E N G R E G S. And I have a podcast as well, the Health Optimizing Podcast. You can uh, listen to it on Spotify, on Apple Podcasts, on all the audio platforms. So um, just if there's any topic that um, that a listener of you here today that's interesting uh, to her or him as well just just shoot me a message and uh, I would love to have a chat with you about it because it's a huge interest of mine and I always love these conversations man they're so valuable to me I love to learn from other people and just in general talk talk with people about these topics um, YouTube as well Green Gregs and um, what other platforms I'm, I'm on Clubhouse not very active yet but uh, at Gregory Van Den Bolt, I'll I'll send the data so you can uh, uh, put it in description, uh, Chris. Clubhouse, I'm not, I'm not. Is that a new? Is that a new social media outlet? Is it? Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah it is, man. It's like an interactive podcast. It's interesting uh, as well. Ah, cool, man. You have to send me some some info across about that. Yeah, awesome, Greg. Well, thanks for that. There's there's a lot of great info there to, to, to people to take away and start looking into. You know, and we will, as I say, we'll be back. We'll chat in greater detail about some of these uh, mm-hmm. subjects and more there's more we can talk yeah. about man so um yeah thanks again man and um to all the listeners don't forget to share this video with anybody you think might be able to optimize their health and perhaps somebody you know family member friend who could do with taking the bit of control of their own life you know maybe donning some blue light glasses in the evening and when they're watching their YouTube videos. And um, please also subscribe to the podcast on the podcast platforms and over on YouTube as well, where we'll be posting the videos. So once again, Greg, 
Thank you so much for your time, man. It's been a pleasure. It was, it was fantastic to uh, to be able to chat with you again, man. Thanks for having me. Yeah, awesome, man. We'll speak really soon and uh, and enjoy your walk, man. Enjoy your walk and take care. Take care, buddy.